graduates will now enter the hall. Please remain standing for the singing of the hymn, We Build Our School. It will be led by Mrs. Bailey. I now invite her to the podium. And as she comes, I just want us to remember that this is a special occasion for our graduates who will be transitioning from high school. And um, we're hoping that while some will be moving on to the world of work, we know that others will be moving on to college and university. And so we want to make it a special day. We also want our graduates to feel the special um, nature of today as we celebrate with you the accomplishment 
You have traveled a journey. Some of you, it would have taken five years. Some of you, a little more. And you have reached this point. It is not the end. It is just a transition to another stage in your lifelong learning. I now invite Mrs. Bailey. We build our school on Thee, O oh Lord. To Thee we bring our common the loving heart, the helpful word, the tender thought, the kindly deed with Thank you, Mrs. Bailey. Thank you for leading us in that hymn. And uh, you may be seated. Today, this institution, Ferncourt High School, has taken time out to honor the students who will be leaving. It is a time where we present awards, certificates, and we also hear from persons who would want to give you encouragement and to recognize uh, the work that you have done. With us this morning, we have several persons who I'm sure are here because of the special nature of this uh, school leaving ceremony. And I want to recognize with us uh, the presence of our chairman of the board, Mrs. Thelma Joe Hill. Our principal, Mr. Sheldon Thomas. Our guest speaker, Dr. Andre Horton. We also have with us, representing the Member of Parliament, Dr. Kenneth Russell, who is the MP candidate for the constituency. With us also, we have Reverend Diane Honigan, and she is the Methodist Minister for Beechamville and Bensonton. 
Also with us, we have Mrs. Kerryann McDonald, Vice Principal of Academics. Also, Mr. Malan Anderson, Vice Principal of Administration. With us also, uh, we have specially invited guests, Mrs. Erfa Arscott. She is a former Vice Principal of the Ferncourt High School. With us also is Mr. Pixley Irons, who is a director on the Board of uh, Management for the Ferncourt High School. And we have with us also Pastor John Smith, who is the Director of Discipleship and Restoration Ministries here in Monique. And um, we're all here to celebrate with you, our students who have done well. You have stayed the course. Uh, the Apostle Paul said, I have fought a, a good fight and I've finished the course and I've kept the faith. And so we celebrate with you today as you enjoy this ceremony that has been planned for you. We're going to have the first, we're going to have our scripture reading. Uh, it will be taken from Genesis 12 and the reader will be reading from verse 1 to 3. And the reader is Jordan Thomas, who is senior executive prefect. I invite him to come. After, after the scripture reading, we'll have our uh, devotional exercise and opening prayer, and this will be done by the Reverend Diane Honigan. Good morning, fellow graduates and guests. Today I'll be reading the Bible verse from Genesis chapters 12 verses 1 to 3. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and, and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. This is the word of the Lord, and we honor it by saying, Good morning, everyone. We commence this devotional exercise in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I invite us all to stand as we sing the song, You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Father, you are worthy of all praise. To you, our hearts we raise, because you are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. Almighty God, we ask your blessings and ask that you remove all distractions from us. Help us to hear your word with clarity. And our God, bless your word unto our hearts, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. In the text that was just read, God instructed Abraham 
to leave his kinsman and country to go to a foreign land. Abraham was 75 years old. He grew up all his life among his relatives. And he probably thought to himself, here is where I will die. But then suddenly God says, Abraham, Abraham, I want you to leave all that you are familiar with to go to an unknown place. If you were in Abraham's position, how would you have reacted to God's request? Leaving the familiar for the unknown. God assured Abraham that all will be well. God promises to make a great nation of him, to bless him and to make his name great. God told Abraham what the end result will be. He will be blessed and he will achieve greatness. However, the process of getting to the blessing was never mentioned. Needless to say, that journey was not a bed of roses. Abraham's faith was tested and he encountered many difficulties along the way. Knowing the end before we stepped out into the unknown is comforting. However, life doesn't always work that way. We often step into the unknown with a certain hope, but no certainty that our hope will be materialized. We have a certain expectation, but no guarantee that the expectation will be met. Graduates, many of you will be stepping into the unknown. You will be entering places you have never been before, whether it's university or the workplace, workforce, or some of you might even be migrating. The unknown can be scary. You may experience fear or feelings of apprehension. That's normal. What is also normal is that life presents us with many unknowns and we are called to step out in faith. Hebrews 11 and verse 8 states, by faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed by going out to the place which he was to receive an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. Stepping into the unknown, it's going to take boldness. It's not always going to make sense. People may not understand it. Your own thoughts will tell you, you better play it safe. This too, this is too big of a risk. What if it doesn't work out? Abraham understood this principle. Just because he didn't have all the answers didn't mean that he wasn't supposed to do it. If you'll take the first step, not knowing all the details, trusting that God knows what he's doing, then every step of the way will be, you will experience provision, favor, and wisdom. And yes, it's uncomfortable not knowing. The unknown has an invisible power that stretches us. It pushes us to our knees in prayer. And it has a way of causing us to believe more in God, to work everything out for our good. In the scripture, Peter was the only one that walked on the water, on water. And he was the only one willing to get out of the boat. When Jesus asked him to come, he had the courage to enter the unknown and he walked on water as a result. What was familiar to Peter was staying in the boat. And although that's comfortable, it can become a curse. Familiarity 
can keep you from your destiny. What you're used to, how you are raised, don't let your comfort keep you from becoming all that God created you to be. Step out into the unknown. If Abraham would have put comfort ahead of fulfilling his purpose, we wouldn't be talking about him today. Graduates, it is impossible for you to play it safe your whole life and reach the fullness of your destiny. Don't let the what ifs talk you out of it. What if I fail? What if they say no? What if I don't have the funds? You'll never know unless you try. So step into the unknown in faith and trust God to work everything out for you. Sometimes the reason that God doesn't tell us what, what's in our future is because he knows that we will talk ourselves out of it. What God has in store for you is going to blow your mind. Just trust him. The places he's going to take you, the people you're going to influence, the dreams you're going to accomplish, it's going to be bigger than you could ever imagine. When you find yourself in a situation where you're over your head, you don't think you have what it takes, that's God stretching you too much, remember this, God sees you. God knows you. He knows your potential. He knows what you can become. So step out and remember, step by step, God will lead you. When you're in the unknown, God is with you. You are never alone. So step out in faith and allow God to elevate you to the next level. Amen. I invite us once again to stand as we sing the chorus, God will make a way. God will make a way when there seems to be no way. He work in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my God. Hold me closely to his side with love and strength for each new day god will make a way god will make a way yes god will make a way where there seems to be no way he works in ways we cannot see he will make away for me he will be my guide hold me closely to his side with love and strength for each new day god will make a way god will make a way kindly remain standing as we go to god in prayer Dear God, our gracious and heavenly Father, we humbly bow before you, giving you praise and giving you thanks. We thank you, mighty God, for journeying all these years with these graduates to where they are now. We thank you for your strength and your provision along the way. And so, Lord, as they are stepping now into the unknown, we commend them into your hands. And we pray, mighty God, that you would guide their steps, guide their thoughts, cover them under your precious blood and be with them. And for all of us here, we pray, O oh God, for the forgiveness of our sins. And I pray, O oh God, that you will help us to lean more upon you and less upon self. That we will call upon you and trust you in all that we do in life. Father, we commit our lives into your hands and ask, oh God, for your continued guidance. Bless this celebration, and we pray that all that will be done will be to your honor and to your glory. We love you, God, and we praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. Please be seated. I want to thank Reverend Honigan for leading us in devotion this morning. I am really pleased with the scripture that was read and the way she expounded on it. You are at a point where you are stepping out and she has encouraged you to do so by faith, knowing that God will make a way. So thank you again, Dr. Um, Reverend, Reverend Honigan, for leading us in devotion. I want to pause um, to recognize our teachers who are here today. Uh, they are the ones who would have worked with our graduates over the years. And oftentimes, they are overlooked when we celebrate the passing out of our students. So I just want um, the graduates and all of us here to give our teachers a round of applause. <laughs> also want to recognize the presence of um, administrative staff, ancillary staff. Without you and the support you give, the school could not function the way it has been functioning. And we want to recognize your presence here. I want to also recognize persons who are watching um, via uh, whatever media you're watching, um, watching online. We know that we have several of our alumni association um, chapters uh, watching us. We have a chapter in New York, um, South Florida, here in Jamaica and elsewhere. And we know that they eagerly um, look forward to the graduation exercise where they can see the young people leaving their alma mater and um, knowing that we once um, you know, had the opportunity to participate in a, an activity like this. We have um, several past students here now and I just want to recognize um, Mr. Pixley Irons. Can you stand again, Mr. Pixley Irons? Mr. Pixley Irons is um, one of our founding members of the Alumni Association. Uh, he attended uh, Front Court High School when all of you here would, would have only been um, in somebody's dream, right? You did not exist. <laughs> and um, he's with us today just to celebrate in what you are undergoing here, what you are um, participating in. So I want you to give him a, a round of applause also. And now to welcome everyone here today in the proper manner, I'm going to invite Olivia Stewart to come to the podium. Now, Olivia is the second vice president of the student council at Front Court High School. Give her another round of applause. Good afternoon, everyone. Or okay. um, good morning, because it's not yet 12. Um, I was tasked with giving the welcome and introduction. Therefore, I'll start. So members of the platform party, esteemed guests, whether online or not, faculty members, honored parents, and the exceptional graduating class of 2023, it is with immense pleasure that we gather here today to commemorate this extraordinary milestone. This is a day filled with a myriad of emotions, joy, pride, nostalgia, and perhaps a hint of bitter sweetness as we bid farewell to a chapter of our lives and, st and step into the next phase of our journey. On that note, I take pride in welcoming you to the graduation ceremony of Fern Court High School. Throughout the years, us graduates have demonstrated a thirst for knowledge, a hunger for growth, and a steadfast commitment to our academic pursuits. 
regardless of the unprecedented setbacks and inconveniences that might have slowed us down and launched us into a new way of life and learning, the pandemic, we have prevailed and subsequently emerged as extraordinary individuals, ready and eager to make our mark on the world. To the parents, guardians, and families present here, we recognize the tremendous love, sacrifice, and encouragement you have provided through, throughout this ed educational journey, and we thank you for being here. To the dedicated educators and staff of the Frankfurt High School, your commitment to nurturing minds and fostering a love of learning has made a lasting impact on the lives of us graduates. Let's not forget our principal, Mr. Sheldon Thomas, and vice principals who ensured that an environment of comfort and discipline was upheld on the campus at all times. Thank you. And to our friends who are a part of the graduating class, we appreciate you too. As we prepare to receive our diplomas, awards, and certificates, I, a fellow graduate, encourage you to reflect on your achievements and the endless possibilities that await you. Cherish this moment, savor the memories, and embrace the future with open arms and a resilient spirit. Once again, congratulations to the graduating class of 2023. Today we applaud your accomplishments and look forward to witnessing the, extra the extraordinary impact you will undoubtedly make in the world. May your journey be filled with success, fulfillment, and endless possibilities. Here's to a next chapter of your lives as you continue to make a difference and leave an indelible mark on this world. Thank you and enjoy this remarkable celebration of achievement. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you for that warm welcome that you have extended to us all here today. And um, it was well done. I, I must salute, salute you on coming up and delivering in such a confident manner. And that is what we expect of our graduates of Ferncourt High School as you go out, go forth to be ambassadors of this um, noble institution. We will now have our felicitations. And this is the time when we have persons come and um, say good things to you and about you. And we will have uh, our board chairman, uh, Ms. Thelma Joel, she will begin. I am still hoping that we'll have a representative from the Ministry of Education uh, to represent Ms. Carleen Sigri and also to Represent Miss Lisa Anna is um, Dr. Kenneth Russell, who is the MP candidate for Southeastern St. Anne. So I'm going to invite Miss Joel to come, but while she's coming, I just want to say that I want to publicly acknowledge the great work that um, she's doing, Miss Joel, as the chairman of the board at Ferncourt. Having had the opportunity to serve on the board with her, I must say that we were all, and we continue to be guided by her strong knowledge of the policies that guide uh, public institutions in, in Jamaica. And um, she is very hands-on, and she is always present, giving the kind of support that is needed at Frankfurt High School. So as she comes, I want you to give her a big round of applause. Good morning, everyone. Master of Ceremony, thank you for your kind introduction, sir. Fellow directors, Dr. Andre Horton, guest speaker, Mr. Thomas, principal, Dr. Kenneth Russell, representing MP Lisa Hanna, who is also a member of the school board. Dr. Morgan Smith. I'm sorry, he's, she is not here as, as well. Reverend Conigan, Bishop John Smith, teachers and administrative staff. 
Fern Court High School alumni, both here in the audience, watching us on online platform, whichever medium it is, family, friends, well wishes, and last but by no means you, our graduates of 2023, Fern Court High School graduates. Welcome everybody. I would also like to extend my gratitude to the teachers, parents, and staff who have joined us today and who have played a significant role in shaping the exceptional young individuals we celebrate today, the graduates, the class of 2023 Fern Court High School. Today is indeed an honor to address you all on this occasion as you prepare to embark on the next leg of your journey. On behalf of the Board of Management, I extend a warm welcome to the families and friends who have gathered here today to witness the culmination of years of hard work and dedication. As I look at you, the graduates, in this auditorium, all I can see are possibilities abroad. Graduates, it feels like yesterday that you walked through the doors of Frankfurt High School for the first time, and now here you are, ready to take the leave and step into the world, and how time flies indeed. As you prepare to walk the final walk down the familiar hallowed walls of Frankfurt High School, I want to emphasize the significance of this moment. Today you stand on the precipice of the future. It is no longer a distant reality. It is here and it begins today. You entered high school as children, but you leave as young adults, equipped with the fundamental education that will serve as a launching platform for your future endeavors. While some of you may choose to pursue higher education, others may opt to join the workforce. Regardless of the path you choose, challenges lies ahead. When Senator Obama launched his presidential campaign, his campaign message was, yes, we can. Today, your message is, yes, you can. My message to each one of you is this, confront those challenges head on, with your head held high and your heart and mind wide open. Merely striving to get by in life is not enough. It does not propel anyone forward. I implore you to strive for excellence in everything you do, regardless of the task. While it may not be immediately apparent, each accomplishment you achieve adds to your resume and your life experience. Your individual successes benefit society. For when you succeed, you alleviate the burden on your fellow human being. Success empowers you rather than empowers you to give rather than to take. Imagine if every individual lived up to their own potential. Visualize how remarkable that would be and how much better the world would be. While you may not possess the ability to inspire the, the entire world, you do possess the power to strive for personal success. And never forget the importance of your family. Therefore, I present you with a challenge. Give everything you have to reach your full potential and never give up. Remember the words of American poet Laurel, Maya Angelou, and still like air, I'll rise. Each one of you holds the key to your, the future, and it is within your grasp. I implore you to seize the opportunity and make the most of it. In closing, I extend my heartfelt congratulations to the class of 2023 of Fern Court High School. Your journey thus far has been remarkable, and I have no doubt that the road ahead will be equally extraordinary. Your accomplishments are not just a cause for celebration within these walls, but a source of inspiration for generations to come. As you move forward, remember that the future is truly in your hands. And I leave you with the words of Chronics. When I look at where I am, where I'm coming from, I know I'm blessed, and I close my eyes and smile. Sometimes I feel like the richest man in Babylon and I've done my best, so everything will be all right. When I look at where I'm coming from, I know I'm blessed, and I close my eyes and smile. Sometimes I feel like the richest. 
richest man in Babylon. And I've done my best. So everything's all right inside. Oh, every morning. Oh, every morning. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We are blessed. And um, just want to thank Chairman Joe Hill uh, for those wonderful words. I want to encur encourage her to continue to provide that kind of oversight leadership to the Frank Court High School, and I hope that she will be with us for a long time to come. I'm now going to invite uh, to the podium Dr. Kenneth Russell, and as he comes, I just want to share with you that he too is a past student of the Frank Court High School. Yeah. Today, today he stands to represent uh, the Member of Parliament, but he is also the MP candidate for the constituency. Welcome, Dr. Kenneth Russell. You know, I was hoping that the chairman of the board was going to say, let me sing like chronics. And I'm still inviting her to come sing the chorus. <laughs> oh, every morning I rise, I look at the sun. I know it is a blessing when the evening comes. I lift up my eyes to the hills, I'm blessed. With my two hands in the hair. Sorry, music. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. Music. Check. <laughs> this is not my strong point. I don't know anymore. <laughs> so you guys gonna have to finish it for us. Thank you so much. Thank you for that, um, Mr. Master of Ceremonies, Mr. Joe Hill, Chairman of the Board, other members of the Board on the platform or elsewhere here, um, Reverend Honeygun, uh, all the other members of the platform, including our guest speaker, Dr. Haunton, and of course, the members of the class of 2023. You look good from up here, Stacey. You look beautiful. You look magnificent. You're radiating success. You're radiating the future. And the future looks confident. The future looks bright. And we thank everybody who has invested in making it possible for you to be here. I'm standing in, as the Master of Ceremony said, for our Member of Parliament, Ms. Hannah, who is unavoidably absent today and she sends her apologies but also her best wishes and continued um, support or expression of continued support as you go forward so seriously this is a moment right it's the moment that you you enter you enter high school and you immediately start to think about graduation almost you know by the end of the first year if not the first day like I'm ready to leave, or when I'm leaving, or when the day comes. So for you, the day has come. And what a moment. So your mother, your parents would probably say you always wanted to leave, or your teachers would probably say you always wanted to leave. No, here's your chance. And for all of us who have gone through, have lived a little longer than you have, we know that the most constant thing in our lives, the most constant thing in our lives is change. And this for you is a big moment of change. But you have also lived it. And I need you to understand that you are unique in that you spent, what, two years at home? So when you started school, we told you you'll have to come to school every day. And then within a year or so, after you started, we told you to stay home. And you continue to study. You continue to do that work despite the challenges 
of what COVID did to us and forced us into, into staying home and to thinking, rethinking the education and how we deliver education. So that's one lesson which you should take with you. Expect change. Expect it. It's a permanent feature of your life. But more importantly, learn to manage it, to work with it, to appreciate sometimes, to push back sometimes, but know that it's always going to be something you'll have to deal with. But I'm also challenging you to be agents of change. Never say that again. Be agents of change. You know, I didn't know until this morning that, you, you, you see the television set that we take for granted? Uh, it's only this morning I found out that it's a 14-year-old who invented the television. Or you see the little ridges, the braille that's on the new, the new currency, the new Jamaican currency. You have some new currency, right? Yes, and right where the number is, Braille, the number is also in Braille, invented by, I think, a 12-year-old. Agents of change. Of course, I could tell you a litany of all the changes, all the inventions by young people your age in technology, but you know that already. My point is that it's not a new thing. It doesn't end with those who are inventing now but it continues with you and you should see yourself as an agent of change because the possibilities are there, the possibilities are endless. Seize them. But, you know, the other interesting thing about graduating is that, you know, up to today, you have people looking after you, right? Giving you lunch money, making sure your clothes clean, helping you to get out and go to school and go to exam and so on and so forth. Boy, I may have news for you, you know, that's about to change. Because I know after graduation, you know what happens? Suddenly mommy starts asking you, so when you go back to school, what about the application? Or when you get a job? Huh? So things change. But I'm also asking us as a community, and as families to facilitate that change. It's a lot on a young person to go from pampered and cared for to now being asked to be a responsible adult. You should know, and if you don't have someone, you should reach out to someone who can facilitate, help, to help you make that transition as you change from a high school student to a tertiary student to the world of work or wherever you see the next step, wherever you want to go. And if you're still unclear about where you're going, even more important that you find someone to lean on. Because the distractions are there. Another chronic song, him said, I'm going to sing it, you know. When me are the only man with pants pan waist, the old Jamaica bleach them face. And my favorite line, trends easy for follow, them not easy for set. So I'm yeah? You have to be aware that the distractions are there. And ensure that the change that you bring into your life, the sources of change that come into your life are positive sources. And it brings me to my second point for this talk, which is, to care for yourself, because you care for yourself by who you bring in, who you listen to, who help to facilitate your change. It also has to do with what you take in. I'm going to say that again. What you take in. Some things are nice to have, but they're not necessarily good for you. And so you have to be willing to set some things aside and focus on the long-term goal which you have for yourself. So I look at you, you radiate change, you radiate the hope that we have in the young people in this parish. And we are here to help to lift you up, to push you forward, and to help you soar to achieve the goals which you have for yourself. Again, 
Don't be distracted. Remain focused. You have parents, and I want everybody, by the time this is done, to thank those parents, those teachers who have made it possible. Because without them, none of them, none of this would be possible. Congratulations, class of 2023. You are amazing, and let nobody tell you otherwise. One love. Thank you, Dr. Russell. And um, along with Ms. Jo Hill, you have both given some sound advice and encouragement to our graduates. Uh, remember what was said, you should remain focused, right? You should be change agents. You should be leaders, not necessarily um, following the lead of others. You need to chart your own path as you go forward. So thanks again for um, those words of encouragement. We will now be uh, treated to a musical item, and this will be a vocal ensemble. So I invite the persons involved to come forth and um, do this musical item. Keep cheering them, keep cheering them. the thing in your soul, oh, oh. and no the more the moves will let them show, you keep creating pictures in your mind, so drop a little, little come through in time, you will be fine, leave all of your cares and stress behind, just let it go, let the music flow inside, forget all your pain, and just start to Never mind what people say. Hold your head high and turn away with all our hopes and dreams. I will believe, even though it seems it's not for me. I won't give up. I'll keep it up. Look 
looking to the sky, I will achieve all my needs. I will always believe. Oh, oh, oh. I believe, I Thank you, thank you. It is important that you believe. And so I'm asking that you give them another round of applause. For I believe, I believe. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, graduates and well wishers and visitors and uh, those viewing from near and far, uh, it is that time when we get to hear from our principal, uh, Mr. Sheldon Thomas. He has been the principal of Frankwood High School for several years now, and he has been doing an excellent job. Right? Uh, and let me just say this. I want to thank you in the audience for how well you have conducted yourself up to this point. Right? You have been very good, and that is commendable. I ask that we continue on that vein as we proceed through the rest of the program. So, Mr. Sheldon Thomas, our principal, will come to give us an update. He will give us a report on his stewardship over the past year. And I can tell you, based on um, what I know of him as I serve on the board, he is a very hardworking man. He is always driving, and he is always pushing to ensure that the status of Frankfurt High School keeps climbing. And so I want to invite you to put your hands together as he comes to give his report. Standing here and looking at all of you, you are looking so good. Not true? Yeah, exactly. All protocols observed. In the interest of time, I know in here it's very hot, so I won't be long, but I still will present the principal's report for the academic year 2022-2023. From persons who have seen what has been happening so far this morning, you would have seen a number of changes as it relates to our graduating class of 2023. So I'm going to ask the six warmers just to stand. Six warmers, you realize that now they're wearing a cap. It's signifying that they would have completed seven years of education at Fernport High School. Thank you. You may be seated for our grade 11s who are leaving us. Us this today, I want all you to stand and turn around to your parents and guardians, all those who are watching. Oh, they're looking so good. With that bold frill depicting excellence, and for persons who didn't know these students would have met the requirement for criteria for graduation. Let's give them a round of applause. These students would have demonstrated excellence in academics, conduct, 
extracurricular activities, community service, they did well. Give them another round of applause. That's what we're here at Fern Court High School. The whole child depicting excellence. Let's give them another round of applause. And as our token of appreciation to you, graduates, you see the scarf that you're wearing? It is yours. So, persons can say that you have met the requirement to be at Fern Coast. So it's yours. You're not. Yes, it's yours. The scarf is yours. With that gold frill depicting excellence. All right, you may be seated. This year, would have celebra we are celebrating our 85th anniversary as a school with the theme reignited our zeal to achieve greatness. I must thank the Board of Management, led by Mr. Majoil, for their tremendous support over this academic year. And I also want to welcome new members to the board for the period 2023. 2025, Dr. Kenneth Russell, you all have heard him earlier today. Welcome, sir, to the Board of Management. Give him a round of applause. Miss Mitzi Somers, Mr. Marlon Gregory. Returning as academic staff rep, Mr. Ruben Fullerton. Mrs. Marie Burnett, administrative staff rep. Miss Omisha Morgan is our Sierra County Rep. Mr. Trevor Clark, Parents Teacher Association Rep. And we also have those who continue. Mr. Ainsworth Johnson, you know him as our bus driver. Ancillary Staff Rep. Members of the board, Ms. Jaffia Langley, Mr. Patrick Cawley, Mr. Pixley Irons, who you met earlier. Welcome, we continue with the board. And we know that we will continue to grow from strength to strength with the members of the board that we have. Looking over there to see the staff members. This year, Mrs. Marsha Grant Palmer and Mrs. Doreen Webart were recognized at the Ministry of Education and Youth Lasco Teacher of the Year Ceremony for their remarkable contribution to the field of education. I'm seeing Mrs. Barrett's son, not seeing Mrs. Palmer. And in addition to that, Mrs. Barrett completed the National College for Educational Leadership Aspiring Principal Program, Cohort 8. That means she's qualified to be a principal. Congratulations, Mrs. Bart. In the Jamaica Library Reading Competition and Reading Competition, Mr. Yukuchuku Duriki was placed first in the island for the adult segment of the National Reading Competition for the sixth consecutive year. Teachers participated in the JCDC speech competition and, and were awarded gold, bronze, and silver at the regional parish finals. Miss Patricia Clark, I'm sure I see her. Stan, Miss Clark. No, she was here. Miss Clark got a gold and bronze medal. Mr. Duriki got a bronze medal, and we have students who received silver and bronze. Let's give them a round of applause. Mrs. Carmen Menzies, our app student support pathway coach, we want to congratulate her on the launch of her book, Beyond the Smiles, a true story of pain, perseverance, and purpose. Mrs. Menzies, please stand. Good. 
October 13, 2022, we have Morning of Greatness, Christ-Giving Exercise, and a number of our teachers were awarded for outstanding teaching of their subjects at the CSEC and CAPE level. Ms. Jade Cross, can stop. Kamala Smith, Trudy Williams, Diana Campbell, Doswell Bolt, Demar Sylvester, Milton Hales, Jordan Garvey, Oswin Anderson or Shane Horton, Martin Rose, Doreen Barrett, Rene McCormack, Tanasha Murray, Crystal Anike, Marsha Grant Palmer, Paul, Mrs. Bryan, Pauline Bra Andre Francis, Eloine Powell, Stacy and Bryson. We also want to congratulate the following students who were placed first at the parish level and advanced to the national level in 4-H. Paris Young, Electronic Generated Postal, Gabriel Burke, Rabbit Care and Management, Michael Ann Brown, Kate Bacon, and Dacre. Stan Michael Ann. Rihanna Hines. Lateral Wright. Haven't seen Ishmael Smite. But, and at the national finals now, you're supposed to know already, not true. But we still have to do it again, right? Ishmael Smite is the first place first, is the male youth ambassador of the year. Lateral right, second in big care, lateral stand. Gabriel Burke, third in rabbit care and management. Special commendations to Mrs. Doreen Barrett, Mr. Martin Rose, Ms. Ashe Davis, Mr. Oswin Anderson, Ms. Terian Lawrence, and student teacher, Ms. Ali Alexander, for work with the student. Let's give our teachers a round of applause and our students. Cheerleading. We were placed, Mr. Bailey, stand for me. The reason why the cheerleaders are not here because they're actually preparing for a competition tomorrow. So they're not here, but Mr. Bailey and Ms. McEwgan, they will express our gratitude to our cheerleaders. In the Reggae Cheer Championship High School co Level 4, we were placed second. In the Jump Fit Regional Cheerleading Championship 2023, we were placed third. And we are now at working towards going today. Far in, yeah, then it's a far in. So let's give them a round of applause. Commendation to Mr. Bailey and Miss McEwgan. Red Cross, I don't know if Miss Michael Gentis is here, but our students participated in the National Youth Rally 2023 First Aid Competition and they were placed second. Let's give them a round of applause. And students, how can I forget you? We had students here who were inducted in the Principal Distinction Club. Alia Borland, stand. Kedra Francis, Shanice Johnson, Jadon Miller, Sanik Palmer, Rashawn Thomas, Casey Kelly, Kiara McLean. They were inducted into the Principal Distinction Club based on their performance in the Christmas term examination. And we have also other awardees. Kedra Francis is inducted as a AAP Mathematics Ambassador, which means he would have been successful in mathematics in grade 10. Let's give him a round of applause. And Jadon Miller, the AAP English A Ambassadors.
would have done well in English A in grade 10. Ishmael Smythe, Travis McLeod were recognized as top CSEC performers. Brianna Briscoe, Anisha Campbell, and Beyonce Fullerton, top K performance. Stan, I know you are here. Good, as top K performers. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Let's look at what happened in CSEC and KEEP 2022. Agriculture science, 89%. Let's come, come on, I can do better than that. Biology, 75. English, A, 78%. Food and resource management, 93%. Food and Nutrition and Health, 93%. Geography, 72. Industrial Technology Building, 89. Information Technology, 97%. Physical Education, 97%. Principles of Accounts, 74%. Principles of Business, 81. Technical Join, 100%. Clothing, Textile and Fashion, 100%. In Cape, biology, 100%. Caribbean studies, 83%. Chemistry, 100%. Communication studies, 85%. Digital media, 100%. Electrical, 100%. Entrepreneurship, 100%. Environmental science, 100%. Information technology, 100%. Management of business, 86. Physical education, 100%. Physics, sociology, all got 100%. So we're hoping that we maintain this or do better from you, the 2023 cohort. Let's give the students before a round of applause for that outstanding contribution. Now I'm going to share briefly some accomplishment by departments. Agriculture science, this is Barrett. Presently the department's tutorial form focuses on the following areas. Poultry production, pig rearing, aquaculture, apiculture, and rabbit production. The school farm is established on a marginal hillside which has limited the potential for practical activities However, to mitigate the challenge, the department introduced non-conventional farming system on the farm. Presently, students are growing crop using the hydroponic system. Let's give members of the agri department and students who a round of applause. They will also participate in activities which include open day workshops, Minard Agriculture Show, where students won cash awards and we know about 4 it already. Students have won prizes at the parish and national levels in various agricultural competitions. Social sciences. In April, the, the first official staging of the Geography Stars Award. Is Mr. Francis here? Stand, sir. I have to publicly recognize you for in it, having this Stars Awards ceremony put on by the Fern Court High School Geographical Society and the Social Science Department. The theme, empowering young geographers for future change. The staging of this awards ceremony aims to accomplish two main goals. The first is to encourage and persuade students of Fern Court High to pursue further studies in geography education beyond the CSEC level and also to celebrate the achievements and milestones of Fern Court High School students of geography who have done well over the two-year curriculum. In January 2023, they also launched Fern Court High School Geographical Society. I'm going to ask the members here to stand because I know there are some, yes, our first group of students of the Geographical Society. Let's give them a round of applause. 
and their mission is to educate the public on perseveration and sustainable projects and developments. Physical education. In March, the Cape Physical Education and Sports, Mr. Sylvester Stan Fabi, they staged an eight-a-side football competition that included primary schools in the Claremont District Association. You know, the Claremont, we don't have much competitions for young students, but the Cape students put on a competition, eight a side. Let's give them a round of applause. The school participated in the rural under-16 football competition. We have been out of football for over 15 years. So we started with the under-16. They drew two, they lost two, and they won two matches and placed fourth in the group, consists of seven schools. Let's give them a round of applause. And now we're in preparation mode for the Costa Cup later this year. And later we'll hear from representative of FHS Group 90. They'll have a special presentation. Yes, would have, they hosted the football fiesta and they will be donating a presentation this afternoon. We participate in under 16 cricket, right? and also the under 14 cricket competition. Central Athletics Championship. Fern Court High performed exceptionally well in the 200 boys class three event, placed first and second, thanks to David Riley first and Javari McCoy second. Javari McCoy comfortably won the 400 meter boys class three event Participating in the boys' class three 100 meter event, Dave and Riley was placed third. The boys' class three four by 100 meter relay team that included Javar and Dave was placed second behind St. Jago. At the end of the championship, Fern Court High ranked seventh for the boys. Let's give them a round of applause. In the Inter-Secondary Schools Boys and Girls Championship 2023, 13 students qualified for this championship. Madison Campbell, Michael Lee Palmer, Shadi Allen, Javine Bailey, Geneve Bailey, Latanya Smith, Shalene Williams, Derek Grant, Tariq Moody, Javar McCoy, Dave N. Riley, Delancey Morgan, and Omar Doman. If any of the persons here, just stand quickly. I say uh, Tariq. Okay, good. Right. Yes. Madison Campbell garnered the most points for the team in placing fourth in the 400 meter girls class three event final and placed second in the girls class three four by 100 meter relay event final with teammates Jenny Bailey, Javine Bailey, and Shadi Allen. Let's give them a round of applause. Despite the fact that we have some injuries of some team members, we're regrouping and we're going up bigger and better again. I sure I saw Mr. May in the crowd. Mr. May, stand, sir. I'm sure I saw his assistant coach. Oh, he's waving. All right. Thank you for coming and thank you for help his support, and Mr. Greg Smith. For natural sciences, under the Youth Environmental Advocacy Program, YEEP, spearheaded by the Environmental Science Club, a group of grade 10 and students who came third place among all parish contenders under the direction and supervision of Ms. Grison. Let's give her and the students a round of applause. Mr. Garvey, Ms. Cousin, Ms. Smith, Ms. Williams, Ms. Mary, and Ms. Taylor Morrison collaborated with students to make notable achievements in the Scientific Research Council Innovation Competitions, even cropping the top award for the best commercial innovation. Let's give them a round of applause, the science team, for the aloe vera tea bag in the treatment of diabetes. Mathematics. 
Sir Reed. Stand, sir. Kevin Reed. The mathematics department. They ensure this year that 100% of you completed your school-based assessment. They hosted mandatory after-school sessions for students. Host Saturday classes. How many of you used to come to Saturday classes? Stand up, let me see you now. Let everybody know you used to come to Saturday class for mathematics. And we hope that you will do well, right? Yes, because we have to do well in mathematics. Thanks to Mr. Reed and the members of the mathematics department. Let's give them a round of applause. English and modern languages. Is Daniela Morris here? Stand for me. She was placed second in the Region 3 Literacy Competition under the supervision of Miss Jade Cross. Let's give them a round of applause. The department also published their newsletter, News Splash, and publication of Anthology of Poem and Poetry Exposition. Let's give that English department headed by Mrs. Grant Palmer a round of applause. They also held their department award ceremony where students from grades seven to 13 and teachers from the various subject areas recognized students for excellence in both academic and non-academic activities. Stakeholder involvement. As we continue our partnership with various stakeholders, I just want to go through quickly what we would have received through donations this year. Dr. Samuel Scott from the FHS South Florida Group would have donated items towards our August Culture Science Project. Mr. Carter donated items from the 75 to 80 group in sports and home economics areas. We also want to recognize the class of 75 to 80 would also donate stuff in March, so they would have donated twice within one year. Let's give a round of applause for the major stakeholders. I'm inviting the, 70, sorry, the FHS 90 to come forward. Now, we're always talking about who want to enter football, but the FHS 90 group came together, formed a group, and said that, you know what, we're going to put on a fundraising towards our football program. And this afternoon, they're here to present to Fernwood High School, Mr. Joe Hill. Can Eight hundred thousand towards our football program. <laughs> you have any more? You want to say something? Good afternoon, everyone. Special good afternoon to the graduates of 2023. It is with great humility that we have the opportunity to serve our high school, Ferncourt High School, in such a small way to contribute to the development of the football program. We want to thank all the members who came together, who supported, to ensure that not only do we have this check, but we have some football boots as well in the car to bring in. 
we would have donated in kind as well, and we had a really wonderful time putting together that football ma match in April. So, graduates, I'm going to encourage you to also give back. Send down the ladder when you leave here so you will support your school. I would not be where I am today, nor the other graduates, if it weren't for Ferncourt High School. So, thank you for having us, and we look forward to give even more in the years to come. Things are going on at Fern Court, not true. Things are going on at Fern Court. Let's give them another round of applause. This year, we'll welcome the following teachers to our staff Mr. Shavoy Lyons. Mr. Stasio Smallin. Mrs. Chanel Hall-Tate, Mrs. Ashley Sylvester, All right. Ms. Ramona Fisher, Ms. Ashay Davis, Ms. Alicia Lewis, Ms. Brittany Williams, Ms. Kami Mary, Ms. Terian Lawrence, not here. Mr. Dylan Ashman. Miss Shane McEugan. Mr. O'Shea Bailey. Miss Zena Christie. Mr. DeAndre Gooden. Mr. Damian Coombs. Mr. Leighton Chambers. We welcome you to Fern Court High School. Let's give them a round of applause. This year, we'll be recognizing person for their long service to Ferncourt High School. For 34 years, Mr. Gainsley Ansign. And for over 20 years, Miss Stacey Marie Burnett. for the principal award. And when I call the name, just stand. Mr. Ishmael Smite for his contribution to extracurricular activity at Fern Court. Mr. O'Shane Bailey. Ms. Shane McEugan for their contribution to extracurricular activities. Give them a better round of applause, man. Mrs. Roxon Michael Gentles, Mr. Ainsworth Johnson, outstanding ancillary staff member, Mr. Carl Vincent, All right. Mrs. Kimani Pratt Henry, most outstanding administrative staff. Is she here? Not senior, Mrs. Kimani. Oh, come, come here, Mr. Pratt Henry. Come here. Let them see you because they might not see you again. Let me tell, you, tell them what they go on. Come on. <laughs> it's the only reason why she's there today she, because of the award. Because it's supposed to would have seen her from time to time, right, students? Yes, man. Can you go upstairs? Right. But since Monday, Mrs. Pratt Henry is no longer with us. She's now the bursar at Walker's Wood Academy. Let's congratulate her. <laughs> so you're now going to see her again. Eh? Well, <laughs> so, thank you. <laughs> for other answer, outstanding answering staff, Mrs. Michelle Thompson. Stand for me. Those persons over whom we could know her.
Mrs. Doreen Barrett, outstanding middle manager and contribution to the development of 4-H. Miss Melissa Reed, contribution to the Grade 7 program. Claremont Police, Corporal Romeo Leng, for their outstanding contribution to school development. And the FHS class of the 90s for contribution to the development of FHS football program. You would have met them earlier today. In closing, I want to thank the members of the academic, administrative and service staff for their contribution to help us to be where we are today. Our vice principals, Mrs. Kerryan McDonald and Mr. Miller Anderson Stan, let them see you. Even when you don't see me, you will always see them. Give them a better round of applause for directing and guiding to ensure that our school continue to grow from strength to strength. Thank you. Our parents, much better than that. Our parents for your support to the different activities, the program, and ensuring that your child come to school each day and ensure that they do well so that you can celebrate with us today. Thank you, parents. And students who are leaving us today, we celebrate with you and your achievement. And I know that you are going to continue to live this up to the standard as we continue to march towards one goal. So I want you to join in singing the school song. Join in. Turn around facing our school of excellence. To change shots will help to mold our future as we strive to do our best. Our motto, hard work, conquer, will be our guiding Frank for high, we do honor. Frank for high, we do love. One more time, we are marching towards in this beaming with we will as we front court high, front court high, may God our school off, our school off. All right, God be with you.
school of excellence. We do love. It's our school, our school of excellence. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And indeed, um, our principal, Mr. Sheldon Thomas, has given a good account of his stewardship. And he has um, shared with us all the great things that have been happening at Ferncourt High School. And so, indeed, we feel satisfied. Indeed, we feel uh, a sense of pride in where our school is going and the kind of leadership that we have at Front Court High. Give him another round of applause. We are about to have our keynote speaker, and I'm sure he has prepared Okay, all right. We're going to have a slight shift in our program as um, Dr. Smith from the Ministry of Education has just arrived, and I'm going to invite her. I know she didn't get to breathe, uh, you know, but I'm going to invite her because we want to move the program along, so I'm going to invite her to just bring her, her greetings. Master of Ceremonies. Mr. Leroy Harvey, Chairman of the Board of Management, Ferncourt High School, keynote speaker, Dr. Andre Horton, Principal of Ferncourt High School, Mr. Thomas, Vice Principals, other staff members of Ferncourt High School, families, and most importantly, the transitioning class of 2023. Good afternoon. <laughs> I do apologize for my late arrival. I'm traveling from another ceremony to get here. And of course, there was some slight delays on the road. Nevertheless, I had to make it for Ferncourt High School's ceremony, even as I represent or regional director and the other members of the regional team. You are transitioning to new and exciting chapters in your life. Lessons you have learned from grades 7 to 11 may be over. However, life's lessons continue. The Ministry of Education and Youth Region 3 encourages all awardees to blaze the trail and create waves of positive impact. Make these awards and recognitions count. On behalf of our regional director, Ms. Carlene J. Sigree, JP, or senior education officer, Mrs. Linda Campbell Miller, other officers and members of the regional team, receive heartfelt congratulations on making it this far and be encouraged to aim for higher levels of accomplishments. Commendations to the team at Ferncourt High School and their partners for your unwavering commitment to the success of all students entrusted in your care. To all parents, guardians, and well-wishers, don't give up on them. Encourage them into greatness and into maximizing their fullest potentials. Please allow me also, ladies and gentlemen, to speak briefly of why we say transitioning. The Ministry of Education and Youth, am I okay? Is it okay for me to remove this? It's a little taller than you. <laughs> yes. I'm a little challenged with height. <laughs> All right, so the Ministry of Education and Youth would have had consultation sessions with several stakeholders, industry employers, as well as several tertiary partners. And we would want to know as a ministry, why is it on average 40,000 students leave grade 11 each year across Jamaica, 
but only about 35% of these students transition into higher levels of learning to include sixth form, college, etc. What is happening to the other 65%? Well, when we spoke with the employers, we were told that there are a few challenges they have encountered in hiring students who leave directly from grade 11. One, and I'll only share about three of them. One, they would have indicated that most of the students are too young. Two, they have no experience, and so during the shortlisting process, it's difficult to shortlist candidates without experience. And three, they need further character development. They need to understand the value of working in teams and in departments, even if they don't want to. So we recognized our students are at a disadvantage and we needed to step in and provide the necessary support. So we have expanded the opportunities in the Sixth Form Pathways Program in keeping with the Education Act of 1965, which indicates that the state has a responsibility to provide access to education to all Jamaicans up to the age of 18 years old. This means that in addition to the traditional CAPE option, which most persons know, there are some other pathway offerings or opportunities so that all students may have access. So there are three main pathways with pathway one being subdivided. So pathway one are for the students who have five C6 subjects or more, including math and English. There's pathway 1A, which is CAPE. These are for those who want to be doctors and lawyers, etc. Pathway 1B, that is dual certification in industrial technology, that's the Cape Associates degree, as well as the level three City and Guilds Engineering. Currently, only York Castle High School offers Pathway 1B, but we hope to have some additional schools coming on board in September because it's a very difficult pathway. When the students complete Pathway 1B, they leave as certified technicians. So it's a very difficult uh, series of courses that the students have to go through. Pathway 1C, we know not all our high schools are able to retain their grade 11 students in their entirety. And so we've partnered with other institutions such as Mani College, Brownstown Community College, Village Academy to name a few. And these partners have agreed to come on board in offering programs that will also allow our students to be locally and internationally recognized by virtue of the qualifications they will attain. So Pathway 1C are for those students who want to transition from grade 11 into college associate's degrees. For the first two years of their studies, in their associate's degrees, the Ministry of Education and Youth will pay a part of their school fees. Does that sound good? But of course. So that's Pathways 1A, B, C. Also included in Pathway 1C are other partnering courses. So we have courses in partnership with the Ministry of Tourism. Some schools are offering that program and thereafter the students are placed in jobs in the hotels. So that also falls in pathway 1C. Now pathway 2 is for those who may not be interested in or may not qualify for pathway 1. We understand that in order for this country to build its economy, skill is going to be very important. So skills training is offered in pathway two, referred to as the technical pathway. So the technical pathway trains students in national vocational qualifications of Jamaica skills, the same certification and the training offered to students going to Heart Trust. So a student who goes to Heart Trust and does a level two skill and a student who comes to Ferncourt High School or Money College or whatever other school that offers pathway to skills training that does a level two skill, both groups of students will leave with the same certificate. 
there is no difference, possibly only their names and maybe when they studied and maybe one or two units different. But the same certificate they receive at Heart Trust, they will receive through their high school. Does that make sense? Excellent. And that, of course, is because we know Heart Trust will not be able to take everyone, most especially since our Prime Minister has announced that it is free up to level four. So when they are through with their level two, they can transition into levels three and four with Heart Trust free of cost opportunities. Now, pathway three, the final pathway, is for those students who have no subjects at all for various reasons. And so those students are exposed to math, English, and basic skills training, and the expectation is by year two, they will matriculate into their level two skill. At the end of all these pathways, the aim of the ministry is to ensure that all our students leave with either an associate's degree, dual international certification, or a marketable skill. So rather than sitting down, waiting for calls, looking for someone else to hire them and accept them, they may use their qualifications to create jobs for themselves. Does that make sense? So that is just to explain in a nutshell, and quite quickly, what the Sixth Form Pathways Program is. Fern Court High School has been on this for many years, offering pathways one and two, one and two catering to both those in the classic model going into the universities as well as the skills training model for those who want to build a skill and help to build Jamaica's economy or go overseas if it is that that is where their career paths will lead them. Thank you so much for listening and I do trust that the information will help you as you proceed into the new school year. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Smith for um, all of that information to our uh, graduates, um, the information about the pathways. I hope that you were listening. And I'm just going to ask permission to put on my cap as the Vice Principal of Academics here at Money College to let you know that everyone leaving fifth form can come here and the government will pay a part of your tuition. So, all right, all right, good, good. All right, so we will be hearing from our keynote speaker now, and I'm gonna invite Abigail Williams. <laughs> Abigail will be introducing our keynote speaker, and um, though she is small in size, I'm sure she is solid as a rock. Come on, Abigail. gentlemen, distinguished guests, and my fellow graduates, a pleasant afternoon is extended to you all. It is my pleasure in introducing our esteemed keynote speaker, Dr. Andre Horton. Dr. Andre Horton is a senior lecturer in the Department of Economics at the University of the West Indies, Mona, with a research focus on international economics and applied macroeconomics. He is a former senator in Jamaica, where he reviewed acts and bills before passing these into law. Andre Horton is an International Monetary Fund, IMF, distinguished academic fellow who earned his PhD from the University of Essex in the UK. He is KP, MG, P. Marwick, Thomas De La Rue, and a British Commonwealth scholar. He was selected as the University of the West Indies most outstanding researcher in 2017 for the Faculty of Social Sciences and the most outstanding UA alumni for the decade 1999 to 2008. He is the winner of Allied Academics Best Research Paper Award in 2012. He authors 
two books. One, Developing Sustainable Balance of Payments in Small Countries, Lessons from Macroeconomic Deadlock in Jamaica, and two, Overcoming Productivity Challenges in Small Countries, Palgrave Macmillan. Dr. Houghton is a chairman of Scarce Commodity Plant Consulting Group that does extensive cannabis research across the Caribbean and has laid the foundation to establish the Caribbean cannabis economy. He is director of the Montego Bay United Football Club and the chairman of Scare Sports that hosts the Montego Bay Futsal League. Dr. Andre Houghton is the founder of the Valley Foundation, a charity organization that provides resources for at-risk and marginable youth across Jamaica. Today, we have the privilege of learning from Dr. Andre Houghton, a true inspiration. His vast knowledge, remarkable achievements, and unwavering dedication to making a positive impact serve as a guiding light as we embark on our own paths beyond high school. Please join me in warmly welcoming Dr. Houghton as he takes the stage to share his wisdom and insights with us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Miss Abigail, for such an eloquent introduction. All protocols observed, fellow persons on the platform, students, parents. I mean, as I stand here today and I look at these students, how well dressed they are, how well put together they are, I just want the parents and the teachers to give them a round of applause for making it to the graduating finish line. I'm under the understanding that many students across many schools aren't graduating today. So by the mere fact that you are graduating, it's a milestone. Parents, I know how hard it has been. I know how students and children can be stubborn. I know how difficult it is finding school fees for them, how difficult it is finding money to buy uniforms and sending them to school. You have done really well and it's really good that you're here and the fruits of your labor is really shown. Students, give your parents a round of applause. The teachers, the teachers, the teachers, the teachers, what would we do without you? As a fellow student myself, I know how difficult it, it is to deal with teachers. And as a fellow teacher, I know how difficult it is to deal with students. Students and parents, give the teachers a round of applause for their hard work and dedication and so on. Today we gather here to celebrate an extraordinary journey. A journey of dedication, a journey of perseverance, and a journey that has brought you to the graduating gates of the Fern Court High School. I too remember my own personal journey, leaving from high school and venturing out into the world of work. The idea is this, we want to build on the foundation that you have garnered here from your principal, your teachers, from the hidden curriculum with your peers, and use this experience as a stepping stone that will form the foundation for your life. When I think about my own journey as a student and I recall graduating from Cornwall College, I knew at that time there were many options available to me to take. I could have, one, stopped there and started working. Two, I could have gone on to college. Three, I could just stay at home and turn work list, like many people choose to do. But you, the students of Fern Court High School, I know you are ambitious. I know that now more than ever you have realized what is taking place in the country. 
and you have realized that your effort has brought you thus far and more effort will take you to the destination that you want to go. Your experience here at the Fern Court High School has taught you much. It has taught you how to communicate with people from all walks of life, which are your different peers who are coming from different households and different backgrounds. This interpersonal relationship skills that you have garnered, even though might seem irrelevant and not might be at the forefront of your accolades, but will form the basis upon which you move forward through your communication and negotiation to put yourself in the future. The Minister of Education spoke profoundly a while ago. Only 35% of students who graduate from high school end up in some tertiary level institution. Let me be more clear. Only 17% of Jamaicans enter tertiary level education. And this needs to improve. Let me tell you why. Without academics and knowledge, a country cannot develop. And the level of underdevelopment that we've seen across the length and breadth of Jamaica today is because, not because we've educated tertiarily a small amount of our students, but because most of who we educate with tertiary degrees decide to leave. And why do they leave? They leave for push factors that push them away from Jamaica. And what our research has shown is that income poverty, bad mind, lack of appreciation for your job are factors that push people away from Jamaica. Pull factors are factors that exist in North America, in the Europe, and uh, other Caribbean countries like the Cayman Islands and Barbados that pull educated people away from Jamaica towards those countries. But I put it to you today, students of Fern Court, that Jamaica have the ability to generate those pull factors similar to North America, similar to the Cayman Islands, similar to Barbados. All it requires is a will. And this will has to begin somewhere, and it begins with you. The income factor is important. When I, when I graduated from sixth form, I knew I wanted to go to university, but it wasn't a certain. When, when I went to seek a job, the employer at that time said that they were going to pay me something like, it was a very long time, 2000, 2000, nine, yeah, when I got from six pounds, 2000, they were paying me about like $20,000 a month. And I looked at the 20000 and I looked at my grades and I decided that this $20,000 can't really mind me. So I decided that I had to go to university because I need to increase my level of education in order to increase my income. But how would I afford university? That was the next question. Because my mother couldn't afford it. My father really couldn't afford it. But how would I afford it? I met a mentor who told me that if I studied hard, got involved in student politics, and got involved in sports, then I could receive a scholarship. And a scholarship, I say, yeah, man, you get a scholarship, and a scholarship pay for your school, and give you a stipend a month time, you can look after yourself or whatever. And I said, really? So whilst my other friends were busy working to pay their school fee, I was busy studying to pay my school fees. And so said, so done. I, I, got, I got the KPMG Pete Mark Scholarship from, account, from an accounting firm. And I was top of my class. When I graduated with my first degree, top of my class, first class honors, accounting and economics, I went to look at job again. At that time, he said, okay, Mr. Hart, we're going to pay you $40,000 a month. Track the trajectory, you know. Six farm, 20,000 a month. 
first degree, 40,000 a month. I graduate top of my class. But I say, miss, this not add up. This makes no sense. Because there's no way I can get top of my class and come to now and I tell me about 40,000. I can't stay in my yard and make that. I was very demotivated by the amount. And I decided that I needed to do more. So I enrolled in a master's program. And I did two years of master's. And when I completed those two years of master's in 2005, I was offered not 40,000, but 240,000 per month. So the point I'm trying to make to you, fellow students, is that the more education you garner, the more academically inclined you become, the better position you're in to earn a higher income. And not only that, never let money be a deciding factor for you to embark on an academic journey. Let me repeat that. Never let your lack of money be a deciding factor to prevent you from embarking on an academic journey. There are hosts of scholarships out there available to you. You have a Grace Kennedy Scholarship, the NCB Scholarship, Jamaica Flower Mill Scholarship, KPMG Scholarship, plus the universities have a host of bursaries that they will make available to you as long as you are willing to demonstrate that you want to accomplish. And it's important because... Many times we are hampered by fear. Many times we are hampered by all other factors other than the will to achieve. And I want to implore you students of Fern Court High School today to always maintain the will to achieve. And you will achieve much. Young boys, the country depends on you. I'm looking at the Fern Court cohort of graduates and I'm seeing far more females and I'm seeing males. And this is a representation of what the University of the West Indies looks like also. Because a significant portion of our cohort are females as well with a little sprinklings of males here and there. We have to appreciate the effort that you have displayed young boys and I want to implore you put your book for first before you think about woman and pitney. Put your book first. Young ladies, Jamaica has one of the highest female management rate in the entire world, which means that the females in Jamaica have been doing and will continue to do really well. You too, I implore that you put your book first before you think about boyfriend and families. Very, very important. A lot of students attend tertiary institutions and complete tertiary degrees because they want to follow a friend, which is not a bad idea because you're following them to do something good. I spoke to someone once and they said they're doing nursing and I said, why are you doing nursing? I said, that, oh, you know, my best friend is doing nursing. Spoke to somebody else, they are doing accounting. Oh, why are you doing accounting? Oh, my best friend is doing accounting. Spoke to somebody else, they are doing engineering. Why you chose to do engineering? My best friend is doing engineering. Each of us, throughout the course of life, is embarking on a solo journey to fulfill our own purpose, to fulfill our own destiny. As a result, each of us must choose the discipline that we decide to partake in based on our innate abilities, based on what we want to accomplish, and based on where we see ourselves in the future. So it is good for us to follow friends, but always remember to maintain your own individual identity, which is very, very important. We all face challenges, and the world itself is a challenging place. No one has what we call a gold spoon laid down waiting for them. 
And no one has what we call mansions and billions sitting down waiting for them. But what we do have is our drive, our will, and the ability to succeed. Our time and our effort. And this is what we have to use wisely in order to become the person who we are supposed to be. Your time spent at Fern Court High School would have taught you proper time management. It would have taught you how to use your time wisely and to focus the most important time on the most important things that you want to create. Your teachers have imparted on you knowledge and wisdom. Also academics that you will use as the foundation to move forward when you embark in the world of life. You have to remember the principles that they have taught you. Remember the foundation that they have given you. Remember the kindness. Remember the care, compassion. And remember that you have a role to play positively. Not just for the building of yourself, but for the building of your communities, for the building of your parish, St. Anne, for the building of your island home, Jamaica, for the building of the Caribbean, and most importantly, for the advancement of the world. As you think about your journey, and you think about where you are going, always remember to use where you are coming from as a solid foundation. The abilities that you have garnered are not by choice. You are given these abilities because of what you need to accomplish in the future. Do not take them for granted. Harness them and build upon them. Use them as stepping stones to push you further into the future. And always remember that your families, your friends, and everyone is counting on you. As we reflect on your time spent at the Fern Court High School, we recognize the immense power of education in shaping your minds and transforming your lives. This institution is a beacon of knowledge, a beacon of empowerment, and has nurtured your intellectual curiosity and fueled your passion and cultivated your spirits. As you embark on your journey beyond these hollowed walls at Fern Court High School, remember the values that have been instilled in you, the values that will give you the real foundation throughout life, the joy of challenges, and the triumph of overcoming these challenges. Embrace the spirit of empathy and stand in solidarity with those less fortunate and use your talent for the advancement of yourself as well as to help to uplift others. Embrace the strength of resilience, knowing that setbacks are mere stepping stones to greatness and success. Let every adversity that arises give rise to opportunities for greatness. Jamaica and the world is counting on you. At this critical juncture, we need our human capital, which is the foundation of modern economic development. And you, the students of Fern Court, will form meaningful human capital to assist Jamaica to move forward. As you step into the wider world, carry with you the spirit of Fern Court High School. Never forget the importance of gratitude and express your appreciation to those who have supported you throughout your journey your teachers, your parents, your friends have all contributed and are all well-wishers for you. Graduates, the world awaits you. The world awaits your brilliance and your compassion. The world awaits your unwavering determination. You possess the ability to shape a brighter future, to make a meaningful impact, and to leave an indelible mark on the tempestry of life and humanity. As you venture forth, remember the words of Maya Angelou who said, success is liking yourself, liking what you do, and liking how you do it. Embrace your individuality, harness your passion, and fearlessly chase your dreams. Let your light shine brightly, illuminating the path for others to follow. 
on behalf of the board of the Fern Court High School Year's team principal, my own brother O'Shane Houghton, who is a teacher here. I want to thank you for inviting me here to speak to you this morning and always remember that life awaits you and your best foot forward has to come from you. Have a wonderful day. My blessings. Thank you, Dr. Orton. And ladies and gentlemen, I must say that it has been quite a while since I've heard a, a guest speaker at a graduation speak so passionately from the heart. He was down to earth. He was practical in his advice. And I tell you, he deserves a bigger round of applause. Thank you, Dr. Orton. Thank you for sharing with us, for giving this talk to our graduates. And I say that <coughs> I am happy that they chose you to speak here today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we will now be having our sal salutatorians. And they are Aliyah Borland and Jaden Miller. And they will be coming to us. Come on, Jaden and Aliyah. Keep it going, keep it going as they come. It is an honor to welcome our principal, Mr. Sheldon Thomas, our vice principals, Ms. Karian McDonald and Mr. Aylan Anderson, board chairman, Ms. Selma Johill, other members of the board, teachers, parents, guardians, family members, and other esteemed guests. Good afternoon to you all. We need not pause to say how very delighted we are to be the valedictorians and to have the privilege of sharing our five years and seven years journey at the Ferncourt High School. Today, we will become graduates of Ferncourt High School. We did it. We have all accomplished one of the major early life stones of our lives. This is a major step in the journey of our lives that should be recognized for its immense significance. It is an act not only of personal commitment, but also one of pride. We all worked hard to get to this day, and our work did not go to waste. Graduation is not an end goal in itself. It is instead a part of the larger journey of life. And as graduates today, we think large. Marcus Garvey once said, Take advantage of every opportunity. Where there is none, make it yourself. Be resilient and strive for excellence. Though this may be the starting point of our accomplishments, we should continue to be individuals of excellence, no matter what life decisions we make after today. Whether it's pursuing a career path, a trade, or even tertiary education, we should apply the excellence that was developed in us 
while attending the Frankfurt High School. September of 2018 marks the beginning of the journey. But look at us now five years later as a graduate. We have experienced tremendous growth and must be very proud of ourselves. The best way to describe our journey would have been one like a roller coaster filled with excitement, laughter, homework, the SBAs, the exams, and much more. Not to mention those breathtaking moments that we will never forget. We will never forget Mr. Reed, the greatest math teacher. In every class, Mr. Reed would always say, maths are the subject. How can we forget Rihanna Riley's iconic laugh? Her laugh, her laugh could stand out in any crowd of laughter. How could we forget? How could we forget in grade 10 when we had Feel Good Friday and Mr. Thomas became a high flames with his dance moves, Lego the Bird and Stir Fry? But wait, I never Lego the Bird that, that was Lego the Chicken. How can we forget the tight pants and the high hair crew? Once you see them running, you know it's Mr. Thomas coming. We will always admire Mrs. Franklin Bailey, AKA, AKA Vibes Queen, that's our auntie. There is never a dull moment once Miss Bailey is around. Not to mention Miss Murray's inspirational speeches that, that she would present to her students of accounts before she begins any lesson. With that being said, we thank all the teachers that have been a part of our five years here at Burnford High School. We appreciate you. The COVID-19 times were definitely one of the worst period of our journey. With the transition to online learning, this completely changed our approach towards school. We all can testify that we were tempted by the various apps on our gadgets. Many times we became fatigued, so we decided to relieve our stress by spending 10 minutes on apps such as TikTok or Instagram. Oftentimes, those 10 minutes turn into an hour or even two. It was hard to wake up early. Sometimes our mics and cameras stopped working. Our internet not working properly. But our lovely teachers and ourselves persevered and look at us today, big graduates. How can we forget our lovely parents who continue to offer us emotional support throughout this journey? Through the highs and the lows, you are always with us and we are blessed to be showered with your many words of encouragement. Also, big ups to our peers that helped us in putting this speech together. How can we not mention our auxiliary staff and academic staff? Though you were not physically in the classroom, you definitely contributed to the stars we have become today. The cooks, you prepared meals for us to eat. <laughs> the janitors, you worked very hard to provide a clean learning environment for us. For this, we say a big thank you. No, graduates, as we continue our lives, let us tackle each end of us that comes our way with confidence, knowing that we have achieved the great heights and are equipped with the necessary tools to conquer it, thanks to the Fernford High thank School. You. Thank you.
Thank you, Alia. Thank you, Jaden. You did share your memories that from the response from your, your, your classmates, uh, your fellow graduates, they share those memories too. And it is indeed good that you remember all those who have left a mark on your journey through Ferncourt High School. You did mention your teachers, the, you mentioned the ad administrative staff and the ancillary staff. And it is good that you recognize the role that each person played in your sojourn at Ferncourt High School. We will now have the response from the class of 2023. And I invite Casey Kelly, Casey Kelly, to give the response. Come on, Casey. Give her another round of applause as she comes. Today we had the opportunity to hear Mr. Andre Houghton talk about his journey of growing up and how he became the person he is today. And so, on behalf of the graduates and the Frank Ray High School, I would like to thank Mr. Andre Houghton for not only sparing his invaluable time, but to encourage us on his commendable speech. And I hope each and every one of us would have took a note from his speech. Lastly, use where you are. <laughs> and lastly, use where you come. <laughs> and lastly, Use where you come in from as a solid foundation. And the world awaits you all. Thank you. Great job, Casey. Great job. I, I, know, I know it can be challenging sometimes to, to come up and, and face the crowd, but you did a good job, Casey. All right? Thank you. Thank you. We will now have an item by the graduating class, and um, they will be coming to deliver this item. Right now, start coming. All right, it seems like there is some preparation that needs to be done before we have that item. So we will give them some time and um, you ready? Okay. All right, all right.
Like a big merry go round, yeah, up and then down, going in circles trying to get to where you are. Everybody's big on you, out. but I lay down, sitting in the same old place, just faces. You gotta get up. I lost the touch. Then leave my knees, cause I'm a The dirty work, roll up your sleeves. Remember, there's a war out there, so come prepare to fight. You never know where the road leads ya. Not everyone's gonna believe ya. And if you go your wrong, don't prove them right. I'd rather stand tall.
to play oh. Unstoppable today I'm unstoppable today Unstoppable today Unstoppable indeed. The world ahead of you is wide open. And the skies, not even the limit. You can soar to wherever you aspire to reach. So remember, unstoppable. Wonderful, wonderful, one wonderful singing from the graduates. We're about to present the graduates. Uh, and they will be received by Mrs. R. Scott and Dr. Morgan Smith. To present the graduates, I'm going to invite Ms. Patricia Clark and Ms. Krista Marsh uh, to present the graduates. Now you will come up as graduates and you will leave as graduates, right? So I now invite Ms. Patricia Clark and Krista Marshall. I'm going to ask uh, Mrs. Arscott and Dr. Morgan Smith to stand by. All protocols observed. Our grade 13 students will be awarded a high school diploma having completed satisfactorily seven year requirements of study as prescribed by the Ministry of Education. Now presenting the grade 13 graduating class of 2023. <laughs> Alwyn Black. Siobhan Brown. Lamoy Campbell. Beyonce Fullerton with outstanding academic performance in the 2021-2022 CAVE examination.
Taira Green. Kedelia Garrick. Beyonce Walker. A resounding round of applause for grade 13 graduates. students will be awarded based on three categories. Distinction with great honors. These students received between 90 and 100 points and will be draped with a gold stole. Credit with honors. These students received between 80 and 89 points and will be draped with a blue stole. Pass. These students received between 60 and 79 points. Students with outstanding performance in the various subject areas will also receive subject awards. Now for grade 11 graduates. Kedra Francis, Gold Stole recipient, outstanding academic performance in five subject areas. Principles of Accounts, Principles of Business, Physics, Geography and Information Technology. Kimono Barnett, Blue Stole recipient. Rajay Gordon, Blue Stole recipient. Alia Borland, Gold Stole recipient. Outstanding academic performance in five subject areas. Principles of Accounts, Spanish, Caribbean History, Human and Social Biology, and Mathematics. Justin Grant, Blue Stole recipient. Sabrika Clark, Blue Stole recipient. Jeremy Jones. Brittany Cole, Blue Stole recipient.
Jay Don Miller, Gold Star recipient. Outstanding academic performance in three subject areas, mathematics, physical education and sports, and customer engagement operations. Shakira Davis, outstanding academic performance in two subject areas, family and resource management and food, nutrition and health. Dwayne Prince. Ryan Guinness. Raheem Tapa, Blue Stall recipient. Rihanna Hines, Gold Stall recipient. Outstanding academic performance in agriculture science. Jordan Thomas, Gold Stall recipient. Shanice Johnson, Blue Stall recipient. Outstanding academic performance in two subject areas, principles of business and cosmetology. Javon Willis. Casey Kelly, Gold Stall recipient. Lissandra Lake, Blue Stall recipient. Kiara McLean, Gold Stall recipient. Outstanding academic performance in food and beverage restaurant service hosting. Sanik Palmer, Gold Soul recipient. Rihanna 
Riley, Blue Stall recipient. Tessan Rumble. <laughs> Kristanika Russell. Brittany Spare, Blue Stall recipient. Natalie, Natalia, sorry, Steel, Blue Stall recipient. Olivia Stewart, Gold Stall recipient. Outstanding academic performance in three subject areas. English language, English literature, and printing and graphics. Cavell Thomas, Blue Stall recipient. Jessica Treasure. <laughs> Alia White, Blue Stall recipient. Abigail Williams, a gold stall recipient, outstanding academic performance in three subject areas, biology, chemistry, and social studies. Alia Wilson, outstanding academic performance in data operations. Dimitri Brown, Blue Stall recipient. Shadeen Allen, Blue Stall recipient. Outstanding academic performance in religious education.
Adriel McDougall. Stephanie Anderson, Gold Stall recipient. Nevado Marlowe. Kayla Lee Angels, Blue Stone recipient. Terence McCoy. Brianna Batik, Blue Stone recipient. Adrienne McDowell. Janicia Borland, Gold Stall recipient. Keel Stanley Shayna Bowen, Blue Stall recipient. Latrell Wright, Gold Stall recipient. Keely Campbell, outstanding academic performance in physical education and sports. Shanika Clark. Samara Grant.
Levanique Green, a blue stole recipient. Shanique Harris, blue stole recipient. Ashaya Harrison, Blue Stall recipient. Amanda McKenzie, Blue Stall recipient. Donya Nelson, Blue Stall recipient. Shanil Scott. Abigail Shirley, Blue Soul recipient. Alia, Alia Witter, Blue Soul recipient. Rihanna Williams, a Blue Stall recipient. Tricelle Wisdom, Gold Stall recipient. Danielle Codlin, a Blue Stall recipient, outstanding academic performance in two subject areas, electrical installation and industrial technology. Amelia Black, Gold Stall recipient.
Deshaun Comrie. Shayna Johnson. Orain Cunningham. Shadeen Linton, Gold Soul recipient. Javon Martin. Lysandra Linton. Kalina Momprimo. Gold Stole recipient. Danella Morris. Outstanding academic performance in two subject areas, technical drawing and visual arts. Abigail Scott, a blue stole recipient. Cade Anna Shelley, blue stole recipient. Alexia Taylor, Blue Stole recipient. Janelle Watkins, Gold Stole recipient. Shalene Williams. Marcus Barrett.
Shree Everett. Shakira Brown, Blue Stone recipient. Tenario Minto, Outstanding Academic Performance in Visual Arts. Sudan Garden, Blue Stone Recipient. Omisha Morgan. Rashe Scarlett. Gianna Mott, the Blue Stool recipient. Asafa Smith, Blue Stool recipient. Felicia Solano. Rihanna Spence. Tian Tate. Sharika Vasso. Tariq Alexander.
Shante Buckham, Blue School recipient. Outstanding academic performance in two subject areas, fashion designing and textile, clothing and fashion. Usher cover. Sashanel Hay. Tariq Moody, Blue Soul recipient. Janine Henry. Darren Smith. Shantoy Ireland, Blue Stole recipient. Aaron Storage. Tashina Park. Nashana Barnett, a Blue Stole recipient. Outstanding academic performance in crop production. Nuska Borland. Serena will be Blue Soul recipient.
Janelle Brown, Blue Stall recipient. Rasan Thomas, Blue Stall recipient. Outstanding academic performance in two subject areas integrated science and industrial technology building. Michael L. Brown, a Blue Stall recipient. Sean T. Gibson. Alicia Comrie. Deidria Martin. Donnelly Haper. Shaquana Russell. Danicia Rumble. Renee Bailey. Rashunga Flash. Diana Dyer. Alicia Davidson.
Alicia Payne. Amelia Edwards. Chanel Wallace. Now, a resounding round of applause for our grade 11 and 13 graduates of Ferncourt High School 2023. A pleasant afternoon to us all. In recognizing the hard work of their form teachers, the graduating class of 2023 will award all form teachers with a small token of appreciation. Rosemary Allen Reed. Christopher Campbell. Akelia Cousins. Martin Rose. Garcia Ho. Shavoy Lions. As well, Bolt. Krista Marsh. For persons that have contributed significantly in terms of their labor, expertise, and time towards the success of our function here today, Diana Campbell.
Jordan Franklin Bailey. Patricia Park. Roger Pine. Thank you. Continuing with our awards and presentations, I now invite Amisha Morgan. To receive an award for outstanding leadership. This award will be presented by Mr. Sheldon Thomas. Also receiving awards for outstanding leadership are Jaden Miller and Anish Campbell. Moving to the category of Principal's Award, Mr. Ishmael Smythe, receiving the Principal's Award for his contribution to extracurricular activity. Ishmael is our 4-H Boy of the Year. Can we put our hands together for Ishmael Smythe? Mr. O'Shane Bailey, receiving the Principal's Award for his contribution to extracurricular activities. All right, Mr. Bailey, go Mr. Bailey. Miss Shanae McEwan receiving the Principal's Award for her contribution to extracurricular activities. Mrs. Roxanne Maiku Gentles receiving the Principal's Award for her contribution to extracurricular activities. Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Ainsworth Johnson, receiving the Principal's Award for Outstanding Ancillary Staff Member, 2022 to 2023. Mrs. Michelle Thompson, receiving the Principal's Award for Outstanding Ancillary Staff Member, 2022 to 2023. Put your hands together for our students. Put your hands together. Good, good, good. All right. Also receiving an award for outstanding ancillary staff member is Mr. Carl Vincent. before she's also a past student mrs kimani pratt henry receiving the principal's award for our most outstanding and administrative staff member 2022 to 2023 our hands together for Mrs. Doreen Barrett, receiving the Principal's Award for Outstanding Middle Manager and her contribution to the development of 4-H 2022 to 2023. to the Claremont Police Station for outstanding contribution to school development 2022 to 2023. I now invite Constable Lang to collect this award. And Constable Lang is also a past student of Ferncourt High School. Can we keep the applause going, students? Good, good. And finally, the Principal's Award to Ferncourt High School Class of the 90s for a contribution to development of the Ferncourt High School football program, 2022 to 2023. I now invite Mrs. Kerryan Chung, she's already here, to collect this award. Let the graduating class of 2023 make some noise. Let's try a different angle. Jump to your feet and make some noise. Woo! All right, take a seat, take a seat, take a seat. As we continue with the special presentations, the graduating class of 2023 would also like to show their appreciation to the following persons. When you hear your name, please take center stage. Thank you. Our board chairman, Miss Thelma Joe Hill. Round of applause. Keep the applause going, keep the applause going. We are winding down and we're doing so in style. Let me hear you make some noise for your board chairman, Miss Thelma Jo Hill. Awesome, awesome. Very dedicated to the task, hardworking. 
that's our board chairman. Now this one is a special person. Can you guess who it is? The captain of the ship. Yes. Let me hear you make some noise as our principal, Mr. Sheldon Thomas, takes center stage. A little louder. A little louder. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That's our principal, captain of the ship, doing a fantastic job. Awesome. We would now like to invite the lovely Dr. Morgan Smith to take center stage, representative from the Ministry of Education. Round of applause, everybody. Our vice principal with the swag, Mr. Malon Anderson. Round of applause, Vice Principal tasked with the responsibility for administration. Round of applause for Mr. Anderson. Awesome. Looking lovely, Sir Anderson. Beautiful. Now we invite the beautiful Mrs. Carrion McDonald, Vice Principal in charge of academics. Isn't she radiating? Come on, make some noise. Awesome, very hardworking woman, my God. Fern Court is blessed. Fern Court is blessed. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? Praise the Lord Jesus. I feel like having church up here. <laughs> Praise God. All right, now we'll invite one of the men of the hour, he did a fabulous job taking us through the entire program. Mr. Leroy Harvey, our very own past student. Yes, make some noise for Mr. Leroy Harvey. Very instrumental at Fern Court. Always admire him. He does a very, very good job. This gentleman had to take on a very tedious task this year to captain one of the best grades at Fur Court High School. Do you know who I'm talking? Mr. Sherwin Miller, the grade 11 coordinator. Make some noise for our grade 11 coordinator, Mr. Sherwin Miller. A fantastic job, sir. Job well done. Now, we highlight one grade coordinator, but we're going to look at the grade coordinator in charge of the super, super seniors. Do you know who I'm talking about? Let me hear the grade 13 students make some noise. Our sixth form coordinator, Miss Renee McCormack. Make some noise. Awesome, awesome. Very willing, very able, very dedicated woman. Always on the go. And we are so blessed to have her today with us. A representative from the um, who came in place of the member of parliament, Dr. Kenneth Russell, our very own past student. Make some noise for Dr. Russell. And before the person who did the charge, he gave a charge. And he gave our six formers who are exiting in our grade 11 some very serious words that they need to remember. Make some noise again for Dr. Kenneth Russell. Now I don't know if this generation of graduates know this lady. Maybe she left before you entered Fern Court High School gates. But we're going to invite center stage 
Mrs. Herfa R. Scott, our past vice principal of Fernquart High School. And I can't forget Mrs. R. Scott. Female teachers would know if your skirt is not at the right level, what will she say? Your standards are rising. <laughs> Mrs. Hart, I'm R. Scott, so lovely to have you here with us. <laughs> Your standards are not rising. <laughs> they would have. All right, all right. We'd have to reprimand you today, you know. So luckily, you, you, you selected wisely. All right, big round of applause for Mrs. R. Scott. And I'm telling you, Fern Court. Past students are very instrumental. They fill every position that we can ever think about. Whether it's doctor, lawyer, and even a reverend. We now invite Reverend John Smith to take center stage. He's also our past student. And for those who were at school on the past student's day, he was there. Round of applause for Reverend John Smith. We also invite a very instrumental teacher. Very hardworking. She worked so hard with the grade 11 students in preparing them for this graduation today. We invite the lovely Patricia Clark to take center stage. Round of applause for Miss Patricia Clark. Round of applause, grade 11 and grade 13 students. Or should I say graduates? Awesome, awesome. Keep the applause going, keep the applause going. All right. So I can't take my seat until I say again. Let me hear. Our graduates, 2023 graduates, make some noise. I'm going to miss you. Farewell and all the best. Looking forward to seeing some of you in sixth form. Thank you, Mrs. Bailey. Thanks for bringing additional excitement to our function this afternoon. It has been a wonderful graduation exercise. It has been exciting. It has been informative. It has been very, very good. And so we are approaching the end of this celebration as we celebrate our graduates who are moving on from secondary level. And we are hoping that you will continue to educate yourselves. Our guest speaker spoke about moving from one stage of qualification to the next. And we hope that you will do like he did and not be drawn or lured by the money, but to continue to educate yourselves to that level where you can demand what you really deserve. So it has been a good one. I want you to give yourselves a round of applause. And I want, to, I want to thank all of the visitors, the parents, well wishers, uh, relatives of those of you who graduated today. I want to thank you for conducting yourselves in a wonderful manner. It is indeed a pleasure to see people sit and participate in a function like this without wandering all over the place and causing disturbance. So give them a hand for their cooperation. And with that, I will now invite Bishop John Smith, and he will be blessing the class of 2023. And after that, 
we'll have the playing of the national anthem. Reverend Smith. Thank you, Mr. Harvey. A pleasant afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Mine is the task this afternoon to ask God's blessings on the graduating class of 2023. I'd like to invite the parents, if you'd be kind enough to join me in a simple exercise. So for the parents and or family members who are sitting together, would you just join hands with your family member as, a, as an act of agreement as we ask God's blessing on your family member who is sitting in the graduating class. Is that understood? So we want the parents to agree together. So this is not just an exercise done today, but hereafter, I want you to always agree together for the blessings of Almighty God on your children. Is that all right? Is that all right? Other family members and supporting persons who have come, if you're sitting with your family members, please join hands as an act of agreement. Kindly bow your heads with me, everybody. Our Father, our Lord and our God, we hail you, King Jesus. You are high and lifted up, and there is no one else like you. We thank you this afternoon for the graduating class of 2023 here at Francourt High School. Mighty God, we stand now in agreement, in faith, presenting these individuals to you, young men, young ladies. Great God, we ask of you to cleanse them of all evil thoughts, evil speech, and evil deeds. We ask of you that you would minister to their needs in every aspect of their lives. Precious Lord, only you understand the challenges they have faced. Only you understand the challenges they are presently facing. We ask that you heal their broken hearts, broken minds, and broken spirits. We pray thee, mighty God, that the various issues within their lives, whether they be physical, spiritual, or otherwise, We ask that your peace will rest upon them today. Precious Lord, for those who are so troubled that they have thought of so many things to do to harm themselves, I pray you heal their minds even now. I speak peace over their troubled minds in the name of Jesus. I pray, mighty God, that you, in your infinite power, will be with them in their going out and their coming in. Let it be that even from this day onward, they will remember to look to you, to call on you. As your word declare, the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob strengthen thee and send thee help out of Zion. Precious Lord, we ask of you that you will keep your hand upon them. Let no evil befall them. Let no plague come nigh their dwelling. Let every hindrance and obstacle to their development and their success be canceled in the name of of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray thee, Father, that if there be enemies that seek to rise against them, 
we ask that they be subdued be brought into subjection to your holy power in the name of Jesus for those who are under the pressure of and the influence of individuals who are seeking to destroy them we ask that you preserve them from such pressures in the mighty name of Jesus if there be any illness in their bodies heal them we pray thee in the name of Jesus we pray thee mighty God for the parents and guardians who watch over them we pray that you strengthen them likewise there are some mothers here today who are so excited about the success of their children but yet they are broken-hearted because home is in a disarray now lord heal those families in the name of jesus and let it be that from this moment onward the words of their mouth and meditations of their hearts will be acceptable unto you and so father upon the authority of your word and by the power and spirit you have vested in me i speak your blessings now over this graduating class i say lord Bless them and keep them. Cause your face to shine upon them. Lift up your countenance upon them. Be gracious unto them. And give them such peace which passeth all understanding. We ask it all in your mighty name. And above all, we pray your blessings on this noble institution. The board chairman, the principal, members of the academic administrative and ancillary staff even the student population who will remain at the school and go for further development and those who will join come september we ask your blessings upon them all in the wonderful holy and precious name of jesus and everybody say amen god bless you for the playing of the national anthem and um, as we get ready for that I just want to wish everyone a safe travel to your places of abode and for those who will continue the celebration elsewhere I ask that you do so safely we will have the playing of the national anthem of Jamaica and with that we stand at attention
bless you and God bless Jamaica land we love. Travel safely. One moment before before you get disorganized. One moment. An announcement for all the graduates. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, students, we are asking that you stay behind for a moment. We currently have your school leaving certificates. You have to be, you have to go to your farm teacher. So 11F, Mrs. Reed, 11E, Mr. Campbell. So search for your other farm teachers and ensure you collect your survey tickets before you leave. And remember, you'll be marching out. So we are going to be playing the music so that you march out in the order that you know you should exit. Can we clear the aisle? Can we clear the passageway? 